morning. Welcome to St. Cecilia's Parish, and thank you for joining us this weekend. This Sunday, we observe the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The reading for today's Mass may be found in the Missalettes on page 145. Please be respectful to the Lord in our midst and those around you by turning off your cell phone or placing it in the vibration mode so that it is not a distraction to others. Thank you for your consideration. The intention for our Mass this morning is for William Bill McDonald. Please stand and greet the Lord who gathers in our midst as he makes us one as the members of his body. sisters we gather today to celebrate the 28th Sunday in the ordinary time therefore my dear brothers and sisters at the beginning of our Holy Mass once again let us acknowledge your sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries Lord Jesus you came to call the sinner Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Christ Jesus you came to heal the contrite of heart Christ have mercy Christ have mercy Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, as you people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Hamlet King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For You alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veils that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. 
The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance, and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. So my dear brothers and sisters, today we gather to celebrate the 28th Sunday in the ordinary time and the church proclaims this very powerful gospel from the gospel of St. Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 to 14. As in the past few weeks, the Sunday's gospel shows Jesus' last efforts to soften the hearts of the Pharisees and convince them that he is the Son of God. So we see in today's Gospel, Jesus' last efforts to save the souls of those who were trying to kill him. Um, Jesus knows he is going to die. Jesus knows that he's going to be killed by them and as we are reading the chapter 22 of St. Matthew we know therefore that this is the last week of Jesus' life on earth so Jesus is trying to save them one last time he's trying to save them so Jesus doesn't give up he doesn't give up on his mission to try to save all those he can and the good news for us is if Jesus is trying to save the souls of those who are trying to kill him uh, 
so he's definitely uh, trying to save us as well and he doesn't give up on us either so he wants to save them um, if not them all at least some of them some of those chief priests who are about to give him and that's why he's telling him this parable of the wedding feast it's very interesting because as we see portrayed very beautifully in Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ uh, we see that Jesus attempt to save some of those Pharisees won't be in vain we're gonna see later on uh, that a very small group of the Pharisees seeing the hypocrisy uh, of Annas and Caiaphas the religious um, chief priests back in Jesus time they show themselves uh, to be contrary to Jesus's unfair judgment and condemnation that happened in the middle of the night so we see that it wasn't in vain Jesus were able was able to save some of those Pharisees so again that's why he's telling them this parable this parable of the wedding banquet that illustrates the kingdom of heaven so we see the parable of the king who prepared a wedding feast a wedding party for his son a wedding banquet so you see my dear friends that jesus loves telling stories he loves to tell parables and today is another one it's the parable of a wedding so we could say that is a love story that jesus is telling us today but this love story should be you know to have a, a a special place in our hearts it should touch us a little deeper in our hearts because it's our love story the love story between Jesus and us and his church right so we see in this parable God sending his son Jesus to a marriage with us with humanity to redeem us from our impurities and to make us his bride spiritual bride in heaven so we see my dear friends that Jesus really wants to be united with us he really wants to be united with his church that's why at all masses we hear the same invitation blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb blessed are we because we have been invited already for this banquet we have been invited blessed are we so Jesus wants to be united with us. He wants us to participate in this uh, wedding. But what about us though? Do we want to respond to this beautiful invitation of love? Do we want to join Jesus at this wedding, at this banquet, at this wedding feast? If we do a survey on the streets with the following question, what is heaven for you? What kind of answer do you think you would get? I believe a large number of people, of course, would give several different answers. But maybe the most com common ones would be, you know, Father, I think heaven is it's upstairs. Somewhere. No, I know it's up there. Something. Um, some may say that it's a paradise paradise heaven's paradise some may say that it's a place without pain or suffering so this view this answers even though they are not entirely wrong they excludes however the main element of heaven which is this spiritual marriage between us and Christ this covenant of love between us and Jesus. Um, so yes, if you do a survey on the streets, very few people probably will say that heaven is actually when I will be finally united with Christ. That's what heaven is. I will see him face to face. And that's heaven because I will walk and talk with God and there's no greater happiness than to be with God. There's no greater happiness than these. However, my dear friends, most people 
do not put happiness and God together. It doesn't go together for them. Um, they don't see happiness in God in this intimate unity with the person of Christ. They don't see God as their happiness. That's why we see, right? Very beautifully portrayed in this parable that Jesus is talking about this, this parable where God invites us to a banquet. But just like the guests in the story, we are so busy, so we don't pay attention to the invitation. And just like we see in the, in the scriptures, one goes to his farm, to his field, other goes to, to his business. Others were even aggressive. They become violent because of the invitation. They grab the employees and beat them up, kill them. Um, so guests, right, people who are invited to this banquet, but they actually see God um, as the enemy. They see God as someone who hinders their freedom. Someone who denies them the right to pleasure. Someone who denies them the right to choose. They see that God doesn't want to do what they want. So let's do an examination of conscience. Why do we come to church? Why do we go to Mass? This question, I believe, my dear friends, is fundamental because it may be, right? It's possible that we are going to Mass, we're coming to church for all the wrong reasons. And don't get me wrong, because to come to church is a wonderful thing, and we must come to church, of course. Um, but the question is, are you going to the right place for the right reason? Or are you going to the right place for the wrong reason? Are we seeking God because He is our happiness, our ultimate happiness? And we want to be united with Him like the bride wants to be united to His groom? Out of love only? Or are we being tempted to use God and transform Him in some sort of servant? Who's supposed to give me whatever I want at the time that I want? Um, am I being tempted to transform God in some sort of genie? Genie of the lamp. Who must fulfill all my wishes, all my whims and, and wills. Or maybe I'm transforming God in some sort of fridge. That I open up at night and grab whatever I want. And then I'm satisfied. I'm all set. Unfortunately, my dear friends, it's precisely this vision of God that leads a lot of people to atheism and disbelief. Right? So if you think that God is someone who does your will to prove that He is good, um, if that's our conception of God, chances are that very soon we will become unbelievers. Again, atheism is born out of a misconception of God. Because if God is only a servant, a slave to my will, to give whatever I want, if God is some sort of Santa Claus uh, who grants me everything that I wish for, yes, one day I will wish or pray for something God is going to give me that thing because of His mercy. The second day I go and I pray and God in His mercy is going to give me that thing. But then on the third day, I'll pray and He's not going to grant me what I asked for. And then that's when the devil comes and whispers in your ears, See, I told you, God is bad. See, I told you, He's not good. God doesn't exist. Why are you wasting, wasting your time praying? That's when we stop believing in God. Thankfully, that's not God. God doesn't work like this. Right? But if you want a God who serves you, if you want a God who does whatever you want Him to do, uh, when this God doesn't do what you want, be sure you're going to kill Him. That's exactly what the Pharisees are doing with Jesus. The chief priests, the elders of the people, the Pharisees, they dedicate their entire lives 
their entire lives waiting for the Messiah, are waiting for the Savior, and when the Savior finally comes, He doesn't come to do their will. He didn't come to serve them. So instead of serving God, they wanted a God who serves them, so they kill God. Simple as this. God is not their happiness. Happiness is a God that does whatever I want. So what is your God? Who is your God? If you don't have the source of your happiness in God, it's quite possible that you kill Him in your heart. So this Sunday's Gospel, my dear friends, speaks once again of a need of conversion. We need to change our hearts and participate in the wedding banquet. Um, otherwise, we'll be like the guest who goes to the banquet, but he goes to the banquet, banquet without the proper attire, without the... Right. Saint Jerome, he's gonna say that this proper attire, this bridal garment, is our love for God. That's what it represents. Christianity, my dear friends, is not the, the religion of the pagan gods who do all our wills, no. It is rather the religion of God's love in our lives. So it is His will that must happen on earth and in heaven. Thy will be done. God desires us and He's thirsty for our souls. So let us therefore, my dear friends, put on our wedding garments so that we may be welcome at His saving banquet, this divine Eucharist. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for as man, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, together, let us pray now for our needs and the needs of all God's beloved people. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, that we may always welcome all who approach with sincere hearts and be a model of acceptance and hospitality to all who seek refuge. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our Lord, prayer. prayer. We pray for our local and our national political leaders to continue to encourage understanding and respect for those who are different than us, as we acknowledge they were all part of the same human family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for a growing respect for all human life in every age, stage, and condition, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Francis Bissonnet, for Joseph de Russo, and for all those who have died recently. And at this Mass, we pray for the repose of the soul of Bill McDonald. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. We pray also for all of our own personal intentions, which we reveal now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Gentle and loving God, you sent your Son to show us the way to the kingdom. Open our hearts to your will and lead us in your love. We ask this, Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with a sacrificial offering, that through these acts of devoteness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord of our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death. Summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We acclaim.
make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread through all the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Remember today, Bill McDonald. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Over the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you through all the ages. We may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To give us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, may peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously bring her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
your majesty most humbly, O Lord, as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Do we have a couple of announcements today. There was an ex excellent showing at the Men's Rosary Group last week, so please consider joining us this Wednesday and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Rosaries and copies of the prayers will be provided for any who need them. From November 14th through the 22nd, we will have a novena at our church in honor of St. Cecilia. Mark your calendars now. Nine days of masses to our patroness, with guest homilist each day. More information will be provided as we get closer to the novena. Thanks. Lord be with you. Yes, May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week, everybody. God bless you. Oh,